today's lesson is a very important one for a person who would like to understand chemistry properly. Gideon. Good morning. Uh, today's lesson is a very important one for a person who would like to understand chemistry properly. Uh, you can utilize this concept, the basis for theoretical chemistry. Wherever you go, be it medicine, engineering, pharmacy, or chemistry proper, you're going to use it. And as an introduction, I'm going to give you a chance to tell us what chemistry is all about. Chemistry is a, a branch of natural science which deals about structure, transformation, and composition of a substance. Can you modify this so that it becomes more logical? I know it is logical, but sequential. Chemistry is a natural science uh, that studies about substance, uh, composition, structure, and transformation. Yes. <clears throat> we should always know the composition. If we don't know the composition, you can't continue. By composition, we mean what? Substance. Is the composition of a substance. Elements that are found in a compound. Yeah, the elements that constitute that particular matter of our interest. OK? These tiny balls that you see here, represent hydrogen atom. The black ball in the middle represents carbon that you already know. We've mentioned this in a previous lesson. But how are they connected to one another? This light green or light blue sticks represent the joints in chemistry, we call joints bonds, chemical bonds. There are social bonds. Do you know social bonds? Yes. Uh, it's a, uh, a contact uh, socially that we have. With, it could be with our friends. Uh, it could be with our uh, uh, someone that we know from our neighborhood. It, it could be our neighbor. OK. What else? Friendship, uh, um, uh, with our a connection with our parents. What is the most important social bondage? Marriage. Marriage, very good. You're bonded, you will be bonded to your husband. You will be bonded to your wife. That's a social marriage. Atoms, likewise, are bonded to other atoms and the bondages are called chemical, chemical bonds. bonds. How many types of bonds do you know? Two. Two. Can you name them? Ionic bond and the covalent bond. Covalent bond. Can you explain what covalent bond is all about? Covalent bond is created uh, when uh, we share electrons, uh, for example, in water. When we? Uh, uh, when they share when they electrons. Share, okay. For example, in water, there is oxygen. Uh, to get ele eight electrons on the last shell, uh, it needs... On the valence on shell. The, on the valence shell, it needs two more electrons. So uh, it will take one from hi hydrogen and one from another hydrogen. So it will share from two hydrogens. And that bond is called covalent bond. But... Can you make a model? 
for the molecule of water Very good. These are the non-bonding electrons. Electron pairs. Electron pairs. And these are two, the two hydrogens that contribute one, one electron uh, to hydrogen to form H2O. What do we mean by octet? Uh, when, we, when we say octet, uh, it means that... Uh, it is related to, to one number. Eight. Eight. Do you have eight electrons around oxygen here? Uh, no. I see only four. Yes. Then why do you say octet? Because these are the two electron pairs. So you have how many pairs of electrons? Two. Where are they? Here and here. And how about between oxygen and hydrogen? And the, uh, they are two Two electrons, not they are not pairs. Can you help him? The two of them are non-bonding, mm. and uh, the others are bonded to the hydrogen. So, how many pairs of electrons are sitting around oxygen? How many pairs? Four. Four pairs. Four times two is eight. Eight. So we have octet. Octet. Oxygen came with six. Those six valence electrons are distributed around the four orbitals. An orbital, no matter what, no matter when, can't carry more than two electrons. So you put one each in four of them and you will be left with two. And then the two would be given to the two orbitals, any one, any, any two of the four. So these two have two electron pairs. But this one, before joining with hydrogen, will have only one. Yes. Then it invites hydrogen to come with its single electron. It contributes that single electron towards it. So that makes it a pair. <coughs> this pair of electron and that pair of electron are different from the pairs of electrons in the green orbitals. These electrons, are they bonded? Bonding? No, no. There is no atom connected to oxygen through them. They're simply sitting idle, loners, by themselves. So you have two bonding pairs and two non-bonding pairs. But in any case, a total of four, four, four pairs. pairs or a total of eight electrons. So the octet is fulfilled. Is the octet fulfilled for hydrogen? No. Only for uh, oxygen. Oxygen. How about hydrogen? Uh, it, 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 it needs to be satisfied, to be stable. Yes. Hydrogen belongs to which period? The first period. First period. How many atoms are in the first period of the periodic table? Two. Two. Those two are hydrogen and helium. helium. The first shell element can carry a maximum of two, two electrons. So for them, octet is do it. Do it. Do it means what? Two. Two. So if they have two, they are satisfied. For atoms in period two and period three and others that follow, they have to have octet. Octet. So oxygen is from period two. It needs uh, octet. Eight. Eight electrons. Or four, four pairs. pairs. So it is fulfilled. Yes. That of hydrogen is also fulfilled. Because so this molecule is now stable. Water is very, very stable. Can you make a model for
for in case you need this I'm not suggesting that you use it but yes this one make ammonia what's ammonia uh, it's the molecular composition in each and H um, that is ammonium ion, ammonia. NH3. NH3. Okay, these are hydrogens. So connect. NH3. Yeah. Are all orbitals, valence shell orbitals, on nitrogen shown? I think so. How many orbitals, valence shell orbitals, does nitrogen have? Nitrogen, mm, two. Elements in period two begin with lithium. What is next to lithium? Mm, as a period? Yes. In beryllium. beryllium. Next to beryllium? Boron. Boron. Next to boron? Carbon. Next to carbon? Nitrogen. So, atomic number five. It belongs to group five. But what is its atomic number? For nitrogen? Yeah. Atomic number, it's number five. Because it's uh, after carbon? Atomic number of carbon, are you suggesting is four? Yes. No, it's not. It is six. There are two electrons in the inner shell. Yes. And then nit hydrogen, helium. Then go to lithium. Yes. Lithium, yes, three. three. Beryllium, four. four. Boron, mm, five. Carbon, six. Nitrogen, yes. Yeah. Seven. Okay. So there are four orbitals. Where are the, s the five electrons in nitrogen? One in here, two, three. How about the other two? Mm. In an orbital that is not participating in bond formation. Okay, so put it here. Yes. Is it similar to water? Is there similarity in structure? There are both elements of period two. Nitrogen is in group five with atomic number seven. Oxygen is in period two. Two, group group three. Six. Atomic number of this one is seven. Seven. For o oxygen, it is um, five. No oxygen comes after oh. nitrogen. Is this atomic number seven? Eight. Eight. Around oxygen, how many valence electrons do you see? Four. I'm not talking about pairs, just electrons, single electrons. Two. No. Eight. Eight. Four pairs make eight. Yeah. How about around nitrogen? Around nitrogen, eight. Eight. W then what is the difference? Both of them have eight electrons or four pairs each. Is there a difference? Yes. What is the difference? In the water, we can see uh, two non-bonding pairs. Okay. In the mm. in uh, nitrogen, we can see only one uh, non-bonding. Okay. If you were to cover these three with a piece of paper here, here, and below, wouldn't it look like this? Yes, it looks. How about this one? The same as it. 
So what would be the shape? If you look at this structure from a distance, what would it look like to you? Tetrahedron. Tetrahedron. The shape would be tetrahedron. So the angles of a tetrahedron are called what? Tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. How many angles? Four. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can count many angles, but each one of them ideally is tetrahedral. How about here? The angles will be tetrahedral. tetrahedral. In the, and shape the shape would be, be tetrahedron. tetrahedron. But which pairs of electrons? In this case, bonding or non-bonding require more space. In other words, which one is involved in greater repulsion? against another electron pair. There are four pairs of electrons. Two of them are bonding. The other two are non-bonding. They are pushing against one another. The valence shell electron pairs are repelling. The valence shell electron pairs. V stands for valence. S stands for shell. shell. E stands for electron. P Pair, pair R repulsion. So VS, VSEPR or Vesper theory tells us if there are four, then they would like to share the space around the central atom uniformly. Here you have three bonding pairs. Here you have only two. Only one non bonding two non-bonding pairs. Where is the bonding bonding pair more squeezed? In this case or in this case? In this case. In this case it is. So you are telling me this angle is smaller than the angle between hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. Here we have this angle and here we have this angle. So which one is smaller? This one. But that means here it is squeezed. Yeah. Two non-bonding pairs have greater effect than one non-bonding pair. So the bond angle in water is one or four I, 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 point 0.5. In ammonia, the bond angle is one, as one of seven. If we take carbon, this one, in the middle is, what is the atomic number of carbon? Six. Six. How many valence electrons does it have? Four. Four. So each orbital in carbon has single electron. To have octet, how many electrons should it invite? Four. Four. So how many atoms of hydrogen? Another four. Another four. So each one comes with a single electron. They share their electrons. So you have how many pairs of bonding electrons around carbon in this molecule which we call methane? Two. Uh, four. Four. Do we have a non-bonding pair? No. No. So if you take central atoms from period two, the number of bonding and non-bonding pairs taken together will add up to four. Here, 
all four are bonding. How many non-bonding pairs? None. Zero. Four plus zero is? Four. Four. Next comes nitrogen. How many bonding pairs are around nitrogen? Four. Three. Bonding three. pairs? Three. three. How many non-bonding? One. One. Three plus one? Four. Four plus zero? Four. Three plus one? Four. In the case of oxygen, how many bonding pairs? Two. Two. How many non-bond pairs? Two. Two. Two plus two? Four. Four. If you take fluorine, I can take any one. How many valence electrons does uh, fluorine has? How many does it have? Six. What is its atomic number? It comes after oxygen. It will be nine. That is its atomic number, okay? Yes, the, in the valency, valency, its valency will be eight. No, valency is one. Uh. To make octet, it requires one oh. partner. So it has how many valence electrons? Why does it require one? Because it wants to be eight. So how many valence electrons does it have? Mm. Seven. 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 Okay. But it requires only one. Yes. So this is hydrogen with one electron. This is a bonding pair. The others are pairs of electrons. Non-bonding. Non-bonding. Two. Three. This is what we call hydrogen fluoride. How many bonding pairs? One. How many non-bonding pairs? Three. Three. Now, if you look at the structure, all four are bonding. So the shape of this molecule will look exactly like this one. If we cover this, if you have four faces, if you look at this molecule from a distance, you will not be able to see the sticks. The sticks represent the pair of electrons, bonds. We can't see them, but we see the dots. The nuclei are concentrated. Okay? So we, we see this, we see this, we see this, we see, we see this. And finally, inside our brain, a tetrahedron is constructed. That's what we see. Then we think and then say, okay, there must be something connecting the hydrogen to the carbon. And that something is pair of electrons. And that's what we call the bond. How about here? There are only electrons, no nuclei. Unless you have nucleus, you can't see it. So it looks like what? It seems there is nothing in here. I know there is something in here. Have you been to Egypt? Uh, no. No, I have been to Egypt. Giza. There yeah. are... Pyramids. Pyramid. It looks like a pyramid. The pyramids in Egypt, their footage is square. But here, the footage is what? Triangle. Triangle. So it's a triangular pyramid. The shape of ammonia is triangular pyramid. pyramid. That is the molecular shape. But if I put the, I know there is a pair of electrons here. What is the molecular, the electronic arrangement? It is, create this inside your brain. You'll say, oh, I know there is a pair of electrons, though I can't see it because it is so tiny, but I know it is there. So it would be tetrahedral. If you consider the electronic arrangement, it is tetrahedron. If you remove this, 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 you have four pairs of electrons not connected to anything. You will not see 
anything except the nitrogen. But now we have connected three hydrogens to it. So the shape of the molecule is triangular pyramid, yeah. but the electron arrangement is tetrahedral. tetrahedral. The shape of the molecule is tetrahedron. The electron arrangement is also tetrahedron. In this case, all pairs are bonding. But one pair is non-bonding, so the, the electron the arrangement is, is triangular, triangular pyramid. pyramid. But the, sh the, 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 the electron arrangement is tetrahedron, in but the shape, the shape of the molecule is triangular pyramid. pyramid. Yeah. How about in water? You have four pairs of electrons around oxygen. Yes, two sir. of them are bonding. bonding. Okay. How about the other two? They are non-bonding. Non-bonding. So, you see only the nuclei. The hydrogen, the oxygen, and the hydrogen. It will be triangular. It is? Triangle shape. Triangle shape? Yes, yes. because the non-bonding pairs, we can't see the no, non-bonding. You can't see this. Okay, I'll remove them for a while. This is what you see. Yes. What is the shape? Like V-shape. V-shaped. So, because we see these three, it is V-shaped. Or it is angular. Water is V-shaped. It's angular. Ammonia is? Triangular pyramid. Triangular pyramid. This is tetrahedron. tetrahedron. But the shape, uh, the electron arrangement is tetrahedron. Okay. This is from? The valence shared electron pair theory. People have won Nobel Prizes for coming up with this uh, theory. Uh, in this lesson, we have seen the relationship between molecular shapes using models that determine the physical and chemical properties of substances. So I believe this has been useful. Thank you for your attention.